And here we go for the last me member of the orange family, red orange. And I gave this another coat so it's nice and thick and you can't see any white through it. And now for our um, red orange. And see if I can bring this down a little closer so you can see the color a little bit better. And I sprayed down my palette a little bit to keep it um, moist. I also um, can't see through my water very well here on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and just get a whole new thing of water. Because as soon as you can't see through it, um, you're not going to get clear water anymore or white. You're going to get um, the color that you see. And we don't want that. So, okay, so let's go ahead and make our tints first. And so I'm going to take some orange, red orange, and I'm going to tint it down and see where I end up with that jump. And we'll just go ahead and tint some more and see if we can get it to jump further down. Again, we're a little bit dry, so I'm going to squirt it down. And that's a little bit of a big jump. And I don't feel like I have a whole lot of paint, so I'm going to go ahead and mix this in and give some to here. Maybe I gave most of it to there. And then go ahead and pick up some white and take it down further. I need um, less and less as I get to the point, and so I'm not so worried about having a whole lot for the last one. And I'm going ahead and, and making that lighter. So I'm going to take some of this, I'm going to smear it right here so I can see what the jump looks like. And I think that looks pretty good. These, um, this one might be, let's homogenize it a little bit more with um, the paint that's around it. And I think that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and get our last jump down. And since this is our last color for the day, I'm going to um, try to use all my white. And that made it a big jump down. So let's, woo, that might be a lot of stealing there. So let's go ahead and add some paint to it. And you know what? It was just enough stealing. And so this goes down pretty nicely. Okay, so let's go ahead and find our beautifully almost finished with the orange family color wheel. And let's go ahead and paint it on. So I've got it right here and ready to go. And we're going to go ahead and put our lightest tint in the middle here. I hope you guys can see this okay. And very carefully, I'm having my um, little finger work as a pivot so that I can um, have a little bit more control over my brush. Um, and like I said earlier, it makes your little finger sore sometimes to have all this work done to it making it pivot so much. And there we go. I don't want any sh white showing in between it, so I'm going to go over it. If your paint next to it is sufficiently dry and you happen to go over it, um, go ahead and get a Q-tip and, and kind of scrub it off a little bit because it's... Um, Especially if it's been cured for a day or two, because um, it won't come off. If it's, if it's newly painted and hasn't quite cured yet, then you could um, be erasing it too. So if you hair dry it for a while, you probably won't have that problem, because it puts a, um, it dries it. And I'm pretty happy with this color wheel right now. I feel like it's um, it's pretty good. And I have um, 
I've never painted an Eaton wheel before. This is my first. I've painted snails and uh, ballerinas. Um, yeah, lots of things. Bamboo into a color wheel. And again, I'm not letting the paintbrush sit on the tape on the pa on the paper. I'm having it basically just glide over the top. If I had it sitting on the paper, I would be um, pulling off the paint, and I would be um, um, gouging it and leaving lots and lots of streaks. But I'm trying to um, just let it really smoothly like glide over the top and let the paint that's in the brushes come out. Again, using my little finger as a pivot, it allows you to paint a really nice straight line. And we've had plenty of tank paint, so I will probably come back when I'm done and give it another coat after I let you guys go. So that when you see it next, there won't be any chance of white showing through. Okay. And now for our mother color. Here we go. Putting it on. I'm getting it ready and then we're going to mix up some shades. I have to be really careful that my little finger doesn't want to come over and pivot in my wet paint though. I have to keep it keep it under control. It's hard to control your little finger. come back and give that another coat in a little bit so let's put this aside and I'm going to go ahead and and put these aside and see how these look next to each other too that's kind of cool um, because this is our our red orange and those were our orange oranges and they do change quite a bit so um, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of this stuff I don't think I'll need it, but I will need the room. So clean up your palette again, and here comes some squeaking. I don't know if anybody has a um, dislike for squeaky um, paper towels on, on glass, but let me know, because I know we have um, fingernails on the chalkboard and other things, but I've never heard of anybody having an aversion to um, paper towel on glass. I should say wet paper towel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take a bunch of this and I'm going to split it up again like I did last time. And I'm going to want um, some of my awesome blacky red. I don't need the alizarin crimson in it anymore, but because I had um, it in the other ones, I'm going to try to keep a consistency because it might change it too much. So I'm glad I had that left over. Um, yeah. And I'm not even having to add more black to it. I'm just kind of like stealing what's on the table. And again, I want to put a dollop next to it to see how the jumps are. And that's kind of a big jump, so I'm going to go ahead and add some paint to this one. 
this is the biggest pile I need too, so it's okay to add more to it. And I'm pretty happy with that. And let's go ahead and see what this one looks like. You know, that's pretty good, but it's not a whole lot of paint. I still need um, some of that for my second coat, so I'm not going to use it all. But I'm going to use some more. I guess I need two coats of this one, too. Okay. And there we go. That's getting down pretty nicely. Maybe a little bit more down further. Again, word of caution, don't take huge amounts of paint to change the color, to change the value. Change it little by little, and um, you'll be much, much happier for it. So let's go ahead and take this, and again, this is the one that I need the least of, but I still want it to um, drop down. Um, and I think that works pretty good. Okay. Let's go ahead and move this over out of the way in case I need any more. I don't think I will, but you never know. And we're going to go ahead and check my recording. Go ahead and find this thing and put it on. And we're almost done with the family of orange. Aren't you glad I said family of orange? Okay. I'm going to um, go from the inside out this time because I think it's a little easier to um, have your, your paint. Ah. Ooh, oh, wow. Let's give us some room. Lots of paint, which is great. I don't have to worry about mixing more. I don't have to worry about keeping it dry. I mean wet, letting it dry. And we get shade number two of the red vi uh, red orange. And I think it moves nicely into the red on this color wheel. I kind of wish that um, I had painted it solid um, right up to the next one because then you can see, you know, really how how the color changes right next to it, but I'm trying to follow the Eaton wheel pattern, Eaton star, and so on. I'm going by the rules. So unusual for me. close. One more color. One more shade. Again, twir twirling the brush just a little bit gets the, um, the paint off of it and kind of into a place where I can use it. Like I want it, just like with a palette knife, I want it just on the very tip, tip, tip of my brush. I want it right on the very tip so that I can um, 
get it off my tip and onto whatever I'm painting. And so we have it. We have our tints and shades of red orange. And there we go. When you come back, it's going to look even better because I'll give it another coat. And then we will give it um, our very last family, which is the family of the violets or the purples. And um, I will come back and do them tomorrow when the sun comes back out. And um, hopefully we'll get this color wheel finished and you'll be able to do one too.